Hello all, and I figured I wanted to have a discussion now about authority as kind of just a standalone video and share some thoughts on uh, things like uh, the kind of paradoxical ramifications, uh, especially as I'm arriving in uh, medieval uh, texts and thinkers on my channel that uh, I've been uh, going in kind of a canon through Aquinas lately and now I wanted to kind of paint the picture of the ramifications that I think lay out uh, for us even to this day and trace it back to some degree and I don't want to just say oh uh, nominalism is is just uh, totally wrong and it's just all hearsay and uh, it should just totally be discarded. Um, I think it's important from our perspective today in the 21st century to perhaps, you know, look at it as why uh, such a dialectic would appear to begin with uh, at this time. And um, I think if we were going to start, though, we would have to, you know, look at how Aquinas kind of left the door open with his uh, distinctions between natural law and um, human law and um, the divine itself and the kind of, I guess, NRX sort of uh, analysis about authority, especially in this medieval age, this pre-modern time and um, its uh, surroundings within uh, the kind of faith and uh, structure within uh, Christendom and um, I think uh, what we have to consider though is um, the Protestants come along and uh, they're obviously going to argue that um, uh, the vessel within uh, the, the supposed to be entrusted with this uh, isn't worthy it's corrupt um, and um, you can't get the kind of uh, you can't take away the interpretation of uh, God and scripture from uh, the individual himself and the sort of questioning of authority authority can be incomplete authority can be incompatible with the sort of truths and the sort of universals, these abstract universals that uh, we've talked about. Um, uh, that's just really your perception. That's just your own interpretation of it. Um, there's, uh, it's not totally accounted for is I think a really good summation of what uh, the Protestants were trying to get at perhaps and thus you have this sort of call to um, uh, looking beyond just the sort of uh, relationship between God and the logos of God and how that plays into uh, the hand and action of an authority. Um, it's now between God and the actual individual itself, it's, it's, it's uh, taking that away. And um, I think uh, if you look at it that way, you can see how that plays even to this day, where uh, you know we have this sort of romanticized notion of always surpassing authority in the West, especially in American culture, this sort of storytelling that goes in with um you know surpassing the master you uh you have a a student and um there's these uh teachings that's passed down upon him but they can innovate and they leave us better off than we were even by the master he he, he masters what the master teaches and can even create beyond that and this is kind of uh the sort of Hegelian notion, I suppose, of, you know, standing on, on uh, the intellects of, of, 
of history nonetheless is like you know progress because if you're able to you know take in uh, your uh, historical context and uh, be able to look out uh, that has some sort of progress and I think when you approach it that way you have to consider uh, the reactionary way of thinking today on the dissidents is ultimately, you know, um, these uh, nominal ideas and, and then modern liberalism that comes about, uh, you know, progress or this perceived progress uh, is ultimately the result of, of who we are. And so, you know, what does it mean to kind of just pick out a time or a place that you think uh, you belong to if it's ultimately a part of this entire process of, 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 of human progress and um, you know what are the ramifications uh, for that on, on the global scale where uh, as I've pointed out this kind of uncertainty uncertainty and this sort of lack of of, well, really, dignity between authority. Uh, nobody likes the authority uh, today, whether uh, it's by the kind of, I suppose, nature, you would maybe say, within us our, uh, as a people, or um, whether that's just because of the way the elites are today. But nonetheless, uh, you can always count on... Um, wanting to strip away some sort of authority to then put in another authority. Uh, I obviously think very little of, of anarchy, but this is kind of a, a paradox that really needs to be addressed because we sort of live in this time where there is actually no responsibility among authority because it's, uh, it's kind of just suspended. Uh, we have this liberal ontology that, you know, I think I've demonstrated here has its sort of roots in this sort of questioning of authority and wanting to surpass authority, then this kind of goes on in, in, in a kind of infinite way. It always has left this door open that there can be this individual variation, this, this nominal way of, of looking about things and the sort of progress that can come about that. And how that means for uh, the rest of the world, that the rest of the English-speaking world now, uh, in this internet culture, this uh, time of hypermodern connectivity, where uh, you know the pursuit in the cultures uh, that had intentionality towards these sort of universal concepts that were uh, laid and reacted to, and the metaphysics of that is casted down, is looked down upon, and not even te taught in a proper way, um, then this just leads to this kind of ironic, no authority, but nonetheless there needs to be an authority to have no authority. Um, I know that can kind of be tough to perhaps grapple, but I think that really shows the the state of the elite class as a whole which is another aspect of this video i wanted to touch up on you have this kind of elite class that uh, you know for the first time in history uh, hates its own uh, history in a sort of uh, way that uh, um, really just hates universe like uh, we have in this time this sort of wanting of of pursuing uh, infinite though, um, infinite knowledge, infinite um, connection, and if you want to have that to any uh, degree, you have to kind of have that kind of imperial authority to be able to do that, and so that's where really where you get the kind of weird, um, um, let's protect the dignity of these people across the planet, um, and uh, but yet back home, you know, we want to constantly preach about being left alone for everything, and yet we're constantly meddling, but 
this isn't just because of a corrupt elite class, as uh, you know, perhaps the nominalists would have argued. Uh, it's not just merely the corruption of the Romans, but it's um, by the actual design of, of, of uh, law as it is. And, um, but nonetheless, I wanted to kind of take a step back because I am kind of rambling a little bit now and talk a little bit about what that means where, you know, we're in this kind of post period where the Western world is kind of, you know, saturated everything, all of our activism and, and social cues and uh, whatever the case may be is kind of caught up in this sort of connected internet network on these three or four uh, websites. It's kind of startling to really think about, right? And, um, you know, the idea that uh, you're, we're able to just kind of suspend ourselves and um, try to look at this kind of, you know, progress of, of history by denigrating the past in such a way and, and not to not even try to really understand it today as well. Um, this is really, I think, getting back to my uh, ideas about uh, something like a critical uh, race theory uh, curriculum. Uh, is this, uh, you know, a by all be ends uh, um, situation? Is this a symptom or, uh, you know, of a greater problem of of an elite class that doesn't even really uh, want to even sustain itself. It kind of it kind of hates itself in such a way uh, that um, you know they kind of even like to larp that they're the common man now and uh, that they're not actually authority, which makes sense to a degree because we uh, are constantly ostensibly uh, uh, antagonistic towards authority so you would want this kind of concealed authority as much as possible or make it as elaborate and conniving it and and sort of bring that sort of karmic energy and uh, knitted enterprise of, of uh, you know a personality or uh, traits to, to bring that about the kind of shyster attitude that uh, we see all the time but um, yeah, this was just a little touch up video that I wanted to do to give my own views um, before I you know, step into uh, nominalist uh, thinkers. Uh, obviously I don't wanna just shit on them and uh, I think that kind of misses the point. Uh, like I said, we uh, need to realize that you know, this is kind of a, a paradox about us that we sort of have this necessary need and want to be an authority while at the same time not necessarily being an authority and the problem really is that you have an elite class that doesn't really deserve uh, said authority in the long haul uh, really to begin with because um, of its own like sort of denigration of and I think really what I'm getting at and the fear really is that by not having a, uh, you know, a proper sort of catacombs culture in place within your sort of elites that even want to, to preserve your civilization or, or think it's even worthy of, of, of keeping, how do we, uh, you know, look back at, um, you know, when the medievals discover uh, the Greek texts of, of Aristotle, like Aquinas did. And, uh, you know, are, is that kind of, um, is, 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 do we have the kind of pieces in motion of if there's a kind of societal collapse of, you know, all that is uh, gained and, and the kind of knowledge that we've managed to acquire in our civilization and uncovered from other prior civilizations, um, if nobody really even cares or uh, takes it just totally for granted, uh, not only is it going to be taught in an improper way, but it also won't be appreciated and uh, thus you'll have a lot of issues uh, to deal with. But 
yeah, this is just a little ramble video that I wanted to make to hold everyone over uh, until I get some other uh, video projects rolling, but uh, thanks for watching.